Hey, beautiful people and ugly bitches, too. This week's episode is being brought to you by Bevel, the first and only shaving system for people with coarse, curly hair and sensitive skin. It's an amazing razor. I'm getting one for the fam, for the friends, and you can also do the same. You can get it for yourself. And if you go over to bevel.com and use offer code free read, the first 200 people will get their first month free. So go over there, take care of your skin, look sexy and shit springs around the corner. And let's start the show. Use a hole. <laughs> Wait a minute, ludicrous? That's what you, you in a ludicrous mood today? I was just actually am <laughs> never in a ludicrous mood. You doing whole activities with whole tendencies. Holes are your friends. Holes are your enemies. I haven't been in a ludicrous mood since seventh or eighth grade. I used to love Luda's misogynistic ass. Oh, I love that shit. Move, bitch. You honestly could not tell me one fucking thing. <laughs> When that song oh, came so out. animated. I was so aggressive on the highway when that song was on in my car. My I was God. just under pressure because I didn't know what to say. Ooh. And I said, just say the first thing that comes to mind. <laughs> and that's what it was. <laughs> well, I loved it. Okay. That well, was Luda at his peak, so thank you for that. I'm, uh, woof. I was going to say I'm ludicrous. I'll be word of mouth. I'll be, uh, karma. Okay. And this and is the read. this is the read. <laughs> um... Hey. Hey, friend. What's up? Uh, Happy birthday to Sante. Sante's birthday was yesterday. Yes. We stayed up so late. And ate sugar and bullshit. <laughs> right. Ridiculousness. Um, Shout out to the weather coming around slowly but surely. Playing with our emotions because it was 70 for like two days and then it dropped back down to like 40. 30. Right. And now my allergies are going in between chilling out and okay, acting I thought the that fucked was just up. Me. No. Mm-mm. My okay. allergies are doing the fucking most. My eyelid was swollen for three days, nigga. Well, it's like 60 <sighs> something today, so we're doing nice. Right. Um, no so reasons shout to out complain. To that. <laughs> I guess. Um, Black Excellence. Hey, man. This week, there's a nine year old girl by the name of Anaya Lee Willibus. And I want to say that I did that name. Like, I really feel like okay. I was, I'm very confident that I said that right, even though I'm probably wrong. Okay. But either way, she's nine. She's awesome. She's from Brooklyn. And she's now the youngest published author of a chapter book in U.S. history. Because last year, she published a book called... Why don't I have the fucking... I just I just bought the damn book. <laughs> Stop playing with me, Chrome. Move. You cannot be frozen right now. This, I am at work! This happens to you every episode. Your Chrome decides to the just The day Mohan... <laughs> I just bought the book. The day Mohan found his confidence. Oh, amen. You can get it on Amazon as well. It's 46 pages. She loves to read. She's super adorable. And she's out here doing things. Um, Her mother says that she's much like a regular girl in every other sense. And then she fights and eats um, high fructose corn syrup. And like takes a nap on the couch and all of that other stuff. Mm -hmm. But she's also like out here changing the game. And I think that at nine for me, I was still sneaking into the kitchen and eating the powdered (laughs) Kool-Aid. Out of the container Almost and definitely. Then getting in trouble for I it. was still trying to hide my beats and my napkin and then pretend like I had to throw it away in the middle of dinner. Like I yeah, was still uh, very childish. Because beets? <laughs> Gross. Right. And my mama was like rude about it. She was one of them. If you're not going to eat them this week, you're going to eat them in two weeks, bitch. Oh, like, absolutely. You will eat these fucking beets. Yeah. It, they will be consumed. You're not leaving the table. That's how she was. So big shout out to Brooklyn and Anaya Lee. Amen. And Congratulations. Her book. Like I said, it's like, I think it's so beautiful. It was like, like 10 bucks or something on there. I don't even know if it was that much. So go and get it for you, your kid, and so on and so forth. These young black kids out here are so brilliant. Right here, too, like local. Yep. That's great. Right across the bridge. Right across that bridge. Literally. <laughs> um, so this week, 
fuck. I had a good one. Oh, it's not in this week and I love bread. Should that just be the name of the That's fucking show? That's what you shit? said it was going to be. I thought you meant that. Oh, I forgot I said that. <laughs> you made that we... fucking Instagram video. <laughs> what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Did you make it? Because it looks like you. It has you written all of Okay, so you that. did. All right. I mean, because Oprah, what are you talking about? <laughs> like She is talking about carbohydrates. We know this. She eats it every day. Well, fine. The shit should be, can be called I Love Bread Again this week. I low-key keep waiting on you to scream, bitch, you guessed it again in my ear, because I just you know, know that you are. Because you know what? I it. knew it, and I knew it, because that's exactly how petty I your ass is. Did. I knew it. And there you have been love people to be have been requesting it. No, See? people have been asking for bitch, you guessed it to make a return. <sighs> and I have been telling them, like, no, I'm not going to continue to do that to my sister. Mm-hmm. And also, like, I've just completely moved past that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm a bigger and better person. Oh, I'm okay. a better place in my life. Oh, all right. And I just don't feel like that is necessary. So you've risen above it. Absolutely. Okay. I'm not, you know, that's the K Michelle of my past. And I'm completely, <laughs> I'm completely like, I'm on a new level. Like, I moved, I've so moved you, on. You've ascended from that phase in your life. Right. Yeah, no. Okay. You know, everything, you so. even good things come to an end. But you still thought about it, though. I did consider it. <laughs> But for nostalgia, for nostalgia. I already know one day you're going to do it. That's why I just stay ready. You know what? And that's how we feel about like a Destiny's Child like reunion yes. tour. And you know, it's just, it may happen, it that's may not. That's how I feel about Beyonce and this album I check title three or four times a day because oh, no, I that's just know happen. this bitch is just, she. that's how crafty she is. And you know, that's and another that's part of the reason are. why I almost did it because you know, being a <laughs> right. fan of Beyonce, <laughs> right. you know, you love and just a surprise walking drop. in my Beyonce, I feel like oh, okay. it's just bad you know to just keep them guessing and in keep your personal on their toes Beyonce journey and just okay you know keep it As moving you walk like that. In her footsteps but today's not the day for that and next week is probably not the week for <laughs> it and you know, never going to happen it's just you know I've I've moved on okay you truly haven't but I just want you to know that I am ready just so okay. you know that's that fine. I know all right speaking of moving on um Sierra <laughs> why <laughs> It was like as soon as we got out the studio, this happened. So Sierra and Russell Wilson are engaged and they chose to uh, report live from that island that the Golden Girls got stranded on that one time. <laughs> the the island that ended up when being they, the resort behind the hotel? Right. Okay. And they were reporting live from there, and they said, like, oh, he was like, she said yes. And she was like, <laughs> and then showed off, like, this giant ring. Yes. I mean, the, it was massive. It was. She didn't even have to do too much showing off. That ring showed itself off. Really? They, it crept up from the perimeter, like, you gonna see me today. Like, she gonna I'm get over. carpal tunnel. Yeah. <laughs> Like, like, that ring real, is that ridiculous. Ring, my God. Okay, Russell, I understand. Like, all right, sir. Because that is impressive. That is a big-ass ring. Um, I'm happy for her. I'm, uh, yeah. My first thought is congratulations. Absolutely. It must have been really hard to be that close to somebody that fine and not smash, not once. I, <laughs> sure, absolutely. And you know what? I mean, if they're even still doing that, I'm glad they've stopped talking to us about their sex lives. I'm hoping they're going to keep that going. Right, because, like, the first thing that comes to my mind when he's, like, she said yes is, like, oh, okay, well, that means he finally gets to fuck. And I feel like a lot of you, like, headlines were, like, Russell Wilson finally gets to dive in. Oh, no. That's not what that means. Russell and Sierra (laughs) finally get to do the do. Like... Let me tell you something. And if you would have just never told us your goddamn business in the first place, then we would have never even had to think about that. And that's the number one thing we'd be talking about. Like, if you do not put your business out there, then it just makes it so much easier to not respond when people are talking about your life or for people to not have nothing to say about you in the first place. But if they're serious about this whole, like, Steph and Aisha Curry life, that they trying to live then, have at it then you know what more power to you but I bet them getting engaged is not enough for them to have sex like they will wait until they are legally married I really do believe that oh yeah no I do think that they're gonna wait until they're married you yeah. might as well but a Shit. lot of people and y'all think- only been together since what what how long I don't know it just seems since like since one run of those special edition lays I don't know no <sighs> 
who's just like, okay, truffle fries okay. is coming out. All right. I just don't know truffle truffle nobody lost, out of high school got... who's willing to be in a non-sexual relationship. I just don't. Well, so. There are plenty of people who are just like... Right, but they're the type. Out. That's why I call it the Aisha and Steph type because they're the type who could do something else, but they will volunteer to do vacation Bible school in the summer, even though they are teenagers. They will like volunteer to do stuff with the church and they are just super involved in the church life. Well, like I've said about this relationship from the beginning, it just gave me very like pictures and yeah. you know, red carpet and oh hey guys, look where we're brunching together, we're so in love. <laughs> Instagram moments. Right. And it wasn't even until a couple of weeks ago that I was like, Oh, Russell Wilson is kind of a prize. Not like looking wise right. and like, oh, like he's kinda out here. Like, okay, I get it, Sierra. And now they're getting engaged. <laughs> I'm happy for them. You know, I still think that Sierra should get pregnant. She should have a baby. She should name, uh, hopefully, her present. Um, so do you think it's real now? Okay. <laughs> because that was like five seconds of dead air. I think that, you know... Um... <laughs> You're trying so hard to say something nice. <laughs> because I'm just tired of beating up on Sierra. Like, you know, right. like you're doing nice. Let her win. Right. It's not like you're doing that. You're not being crazy out here or nothing. You're sharing more of your business than I care about. But that's fine, you know. Mm -hmm. And if you're happy, then I'm happy. And I feel like, you know what, at the end of the day, Sierra deserves a happy, stable relationship. She deserves a nigga who's like, okay. you know what, I'm not going to penetrate you until we're legally married. <laughs> I'm going to respect if your baby. I'm wants... going to respect you. Right. Niggas can call him lame or say he's boring or compare him to Carlton Banks or do whatever the fuck else. But you're talking about a woman who has dated Bow Wow, 50 Cent, and Future. Right. She deserves her white picket fence mm -hmm. and her black Ken doll you don't know right. what's going on down exactly. there, boyfriend. She's had enough. <laughs> she, Sierra has suffered. She deserves. Let her have this moment in Let the sun. Her her <laughs> matching dreads and the baby's name is Future. His government no <sighs> name. She deserves. And there's nothing two lames more than being around each other. You talk about he lame. Okay, so she lame and they love it. And you they know what? Each other's A lameness, couple of you bitches girl. should probably try a lame nigga too. <laughs> that way you wouldn't be writing letters in asking us about this nigga who done fucking keyed your mama's car right. and, and got you pregnant again and you don't know what the fuck life means. Maybe right. you should date a nigga that's lame and not a nigga <laughs> that's lean. Sierra's joined the baby mama and posted bail at 3.30 a.m. side of life. I'm not doing that. No, it. I'm not doing it anymore. She's ready for a man who is going to have Sunday dinner every dinner and Absolute. go to church and Bible study and, and all look, this and, and come take out, out the, the trash kitchen, and not do drugs. And come out the kitchen with the aunties with oven mitts on. Yes. That's what that nigga is doing. Yes. He's bringing out the biscuits because he's making sure. Right, because he loves his wife, but he's help. not a misogynist fuck nigga either. And he believes in helping out Sarah. with the child rearing and the shit going on around the house because the shit is supposed to be a partnership. Have All your the shit you niggas don't get. Prince, have your escrow prince and, and you do what you want to do. Right. I really, um, I don't know how much he appreciates an 808 ba base or, you know, <laughs> things that I feel like are, are very important for your musical career. I know that you say that you're working on uh, the album of your life. Uh. I don't believe that Young Metro trusts you, so I don't know <laughs> how that's going to work out. But yes. I'm, you, you know, can. I'm looking forward to giving you a fair shot. And I I'm am, really I genuinely listen happy. To the, I will listen to the music. Absolutely. I will always, you know, I don't know that I've gotten to the point where, yet where I'm just like, I'm not even going to listen to Sierra's music. Like, well, I'm not even going to see to what it sounds like. I hear the list like. of who worked on it and then I'll decide. Right. If you're going to be like, oh, Red One and Dr. Luke and oh, uh, no. Skrillex, then right. you can keep no. it because I don't <laughs> oh, want God, Sierra. Skrillex. I don't. I'm not interested. <laughs> Jesus. But I'm I'm always Ooh. willing to give it a shot. I just don't keep yeah. my I, I don't get my hopes up. Right. Even though I don't care for Sierra as an artist, the fact that you niggas be hating on her just because you don't want to see her happy is so gross and just really whack. Like she just hasn't really done anything to anybody. Like and you over here mad really when in real all. life you can't get a girl anywhere near Sierra's level. Like in no way, <laughs> in no form or fashion. You just mad on the internet. Okay. All right. You just gonna have to stay mad. That's it. What's next? <laughs> um, speaking of giving people a fair shot, Carrie Hilson has announced that she will be releasing a new album. 
uh, sometime soon. Now, the album is called I Instantly Just Realized That It's Raining as we started talking about this. <laughs> um, you know what that means. God is crying. So the album is called Liar, hmm. which stands for Love is a Religion. And <laughs> you, you, you couldn't even get it out. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't even get it out oh god so that's the name of it I think that <laughs> I think that she has like, oh. a single coming out called again <laughs> that's the same question a lot of us had I'm so glad you're clearing this up right out the gate you know I'm I think that Carrie Hilson has has paid her flop dues. I, do I too. think that we have had so many years of just <laughs> just destroying Carrie Hilson. Uh just like for things like breath, um, existence. Mm. Um, she just would not hold that magazine. She just wouldn't do it. And it was just like, girl, just hold the fucking... And she just wouldn't just do it. The, I mean, and that just started this whole... It just started this whole thing, girl. Here we are now. It wasn't even that. No, I mean, it was definitely the Turning Me On remix that, like, really put the nail That wasn't the, even it for me. Remember what... Because I was, like, a huge Harry Carey... Yo, thing, I remember. Right? I remember when And the Beyonce said, thing was just like, girl, what? Mm. And I was still trying to, like, make it work. Even though that's when I realized she makes poor decisions. Okay. And then she said something about hashtag team this. She started it or everybody's doing it now that she did it or something. And I was like, what? (sighs) Shut up. And that was like the beginning of my Carrie Hilson over it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember. But yes, I definitely think that she has been ducking, you know, low and Sergi Baca's uh, mattresses and things like that. And. Uh, just been living her life and getting laid and being pretty and, you know, mostly shutting her ass up. Yeah, I haven't wished Carrie Hilson will ill will in like three and a half years at least. I, right, I feel like it's been a minute. Right, I've been over it, but not to say that I didn't have my moments of dragging that bitch by her fucking toenails because I did. Like, mm, you I mean, didn't. But that was in the height of my standom when really I would tolerate zero Beyonce slander, so... That was just a different time in my life when I just didn't have the patience for people like Gary Hilson. So, so I'm, you are willing to give this music a chance, I'm assuming, despite this previous Snowboys allowed business that she released. To I the think public. that Carrie Hilson is capable of making an album that I will like. I think that Carrie Hilson is capable of writing songs and using production to make an album that I will enjoy. She has done it before. I will say that maybe she can do it again. This is also a project that I am not holding any sort of expectations. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm Mm -hmm. not uh, holding my breath or anything for it. I will listen to it, and I think that it is possible I might enjoy it. (laughs) (laughs) That is all I can say. I'm willing to give Carrie Hilson a fair shot because I feel like we beat her ass up social media wise for years true and she we just did. deserves maybe one listen um so i will partially agree i will give carrie hilson a shot on the condition that out of you asante and dustin at least two out of three of y'all say yes it's good that's fair i think that's i, more I have than to fair. run it through a filter first i think that i'm that not just gonna listen to it fair. yes i need cosigns from one of the three of y'all because you three actually did like her i never did too much care for her. she was all right to me but the first time i heard on the radio i thought she was rihanna to be totally honest now t- <laughs> so i never did i mean she, i liked knock you down with kanye i enjoyed carrie's little music you know Everything after she put out "fuck me, fuck me," now you want to fuck me in the street? And all no, that. that album was pretty all over. The place. I just didn't have yeah, time I, for that. And so, but her slandering Beyonce and doing all that she she did with Beyonce, that was what made me really just close the door on her ass. So many people agree. I'm, w- but I'm willing to listen. You have to also consider the fact that um, out of the three of us, um, if we were talking about an Azalea Banks album. Mm-hmm. Asante and I would probably say, yes, it's good. That's true. I know that. But the thing is... Would you listen to it? I have already listened to it. And y'all have sat here and played me. I don't know how many I'm times I'm talking about, about another album. 
When her next one comes out, if I like it and Asante likes it, you should listen. You should just listen to it. So the thing is, I don't like the mts, mts that she does. And I you know think that, that that's fair. Right. Not so, everyone likes that. Now, I'm no, I'm not going to listen to it based on whether y'all like it. I'm going to ask, do y'all think I will like it? And that at is least, fair also. Yes. If two out of three of you say yes, then I will listen to it. But if I know I'm listening to something that you're going to hate, why would I be like, it's so good? I mean, you, know, you, you have like recommended Cardi B's mixtape to me. I told you it was pretty no good. less than three times. Pretty good. Pretty good. And like... Cardi... <laughs> Pretty B. good, yes. I'll stand by that. Did you listen to it? I have not listened okay, to it, but so, I have heard okay, two so of the then, songs, right. and they were not I mean, dreadful. I'm just saying, I think she made her way up somebody's streaming chart or landed on Billboard or iTunes, something. I don't know. She was proud of herself on Twitter the other day, so I think she's doing pretty well. I'm just saying, if you listen to Instagram it... Instagram got music charts now? See, you think you are Instagram so Instagram has the Billboard. She is actually available for purchase on iTunes, but you can stream it on SoundCloud. Like it's you can go listen to it for free. It's on that piff. Like just I'm just saying listen to it. Take a little time out your day and just give it a try and see whether you like I it. I will do that. I'm not saying it's the best shit you ever heard lyrically or, you know, spitting wise, but she does all right and it's pretty good. Cardi B. Bro. I'm just saying, but you can't even judge it because you still ain't listening. Car death. Meanwhile, Carrie Hilson has given me no reason to trust her music at all over the past, I don't know, five years, eight years. I don't know. I even know how long it's been since she put out something I cared about. So, Chris Brown. Oh, my God. This little fuck nugget. It's apparently um, getting ready to release a film. The film is titled Chris Brown, Welcome to My Life, <laughs> the official documentary. It is directed by Andrew Sandler, and it is produced by Riveting Entertainment. By Andrew Sandler, is that a name that I should know? I don't know. Okay. It's not really a name that I know, but that's the person who's directing it. Whose name is Sandler, the famous comedian actor? Adam. Adam, okay. Yes. Never mind. That is not him. I was thinking of Andy Sandberg, but I was like, that's not right. That is incorrect, too. <laughs> so you're just really... Oh, my God. The other day, <laughs> like two weeks ago, I was at um, Apple, and I told one of the engineers that everybody up here looked like Adam Levine or Mark Ruffalo. <laughs> Cause I Those people do. look completely different. Mark Ruffalo is what I said, but I thought of Adam Levine because I was thinking about the voice. But that's a totally different conversation. What? <laughs> I was just thinking about the voice because of something else I was thinking about earlier. But anyway. So this is going to be a they movie. They all look like Mark Ruffalo. All the engineers. <laughs> they do. And they know they do. They laughed. <laughs> Sweetie. Sure. Okay. Welcome to My Life is the documentary with Chris Brown. Now, I have to see <laughs> Of course you do. Is it going to be in theaters? Because I'll go. Job. I mean, if it is going to be in theaters, I'm going to. I want. I, I mean, have to everybody see this. else's shitty life movie is in theaters. Miley Cyrus and all them other This shit could be on heads. Snapchat and I will watch all oh 2,000 God. seconds. You really going to sit there and hold your phone all that time? Now, it depends on. <laughs> now, you know what, Chris? What I need from you, I need like, I need a, a trailer. I need like yeah. a super trailer. I need to something see. that shows me this has been produced. Right. And I'm assuming that that's going to happen at some point. I really need to see the trailer and not just to see the production, because honestly, I don't give a fuck if the production looks like Stevie and Jocelyn go to hell. It could be like, I want to know what he's spilling. Right. Like, I want to know which one, how many of your exes you're going to be talking cash shit about because you and your feelings. I want to see the white on the t coffee table. Oh I want to see you cussing out choreographers. I want to see yes. your life. <laughs> like, yes. Because I'm confused. You know? I want to see scenes where it's like 3.57 a.m. and royalty is in the other room having a fucking meltdown. Right. And Chris is high off coke and, and trying to figure it out. turns over to tell her <laughs> to go and she's not there. And then he's like, oh, yeah. And then he gets right. up and then he goes she and does it. But then he like sings her a lullaby and then he starts to cry because he loves her so much. And it's like, that's the powerful moment. <laughs> 
So it's like, okay. oh, is he redeemable? And then it's just like this journey of up and down about yeah. like this lost soul and how he started like his, as a child star and right. lost his way through drugs and too much power and access and, and how he just completely and mental is issues and has just completely like just like destroyed like. Right his life in many ways and how he's just struggling to like get the public to trust him again but he's also like a really great talent but okay. he just can't get his shit together like I want for this to be like a roller coaster ride yeah. of his drama but what it actually sounds like it's gonna be is a big promotional piece and just like I don't know if this is for like for what? his like, album been out forever no not for like his album but like if it's not going to be what you're talking about, which is like an actual interesting documentary that most people would want to watch, it's going to be like, oh, look at my life. I go to the studio. I hang out with these people. I, I do this. It. Da, da, da. He, like, he has to know. Don't nobody want to see that. Right. But then it's a matter of like, how deep is he really going to get? And then who are you really telling this story to? Because I feel like the majority of Chris Brown's fans already know every in and out of his everything. So like, Yeah, but a lot of for? other people may not. That's what I'm saying. Like, if, if I... All, no, all the straight aside. If I <laughs> okay, thank you for being real. If he is going, he if he's going to be really like authentic and transparent, I know he's not going to be like one hundred percent open about every single thing. Right. And that's fine. But the level of transparency that he's willing to to show in the movie is what's really going to sell it for me and probably a lot of other people. Right. I don't expect you to show us you changing your baby's diaper or nothing really crazy or, or stupid. I'm not expecting for this nigga to do a line on, you know, in the studio now if he did. I mean, wouldn't be surprised. My it God. Would no, be. I wouldn't be, but I would just be like, like show us. <laughs> like, I just feel like that's a violation of probation, or, which I'm sure he's on I mean, Obviously, somehow. he's not going to do that. I'm just saying, like, I even right. if he talked about drug use right if he actually something. just talked about all the shit he's been through i think that would be interesting enough like just talking about the last 10 be years open. of your life the shit has been crazy like just talk like but if you're like oh we leave in rehearsal and i'm about to go buy some jordans and i just copped royalty this new fur she loves it so much now we in the club and it's bitches right midnight now we go to waffle house because i'm still a regular ass nigga at the end of the day and i want my all-star breakfast with the sausage and the bacon right. and i'm just a real regular ass nigga and i rep la even though i'm not really from here i don't really want to see that I don't want, right that's, i mean i'll that's watch what that a- I, mm. And as long as you sprinkle some real shit up in there too, because right. I want to see this movie. Right. So like, yes, I, give me a trailer. Let me know what you're gonna be talking about in this. But I'm I'm going to like I want to be optimistic for Chris Brown. Like I t- I hold out this eternal hope that Chris Brown will get it together and will turn himself. He's around. so young. He is, but I just but feel sh- like he's back on drugs and. <sighs> When his girlfriend left, it, I, he Whoa. displays... When his girlfriend left... Oh, oh, you're not talking about Karuchi, are you? No, I'm saying when his girlfriend left him and he's made many public attempts to get her back, which obviously... Oh, you mean like the, been, the stalking you, shit. Right, and then like up. yelling her name out on songs and all kinds of random shit where people oh, are right. fucking sitting and watching her eat and waiting for her to leave so they can ask her, will she get back to... You know what I'm saying? Like, right. And she's... Let that girl move on. Right, but it's not about that. Like, Chris Brown's a regular-ass, light-skinned nigga with regular-ass, <laughs> light-skinned nigga-ass feelings. No matter the fact that he can dance and sing and do all of these amazing things, he has tons of money. Like, he's still a guy with a hard right. and regular-ass feelings right. and shit. And I think that he's put so many of that shit on display. So that's why I would be surprised... If he was like, nah, this movie's just going to be about me going to Full Locker. Right. And I think the reason I really don't like it is because I don't like fuck nigga behavior, which is what Chris exhibits a lot of the time. But at the same time, there are a lot of young men out here who act just like Chris Brown. And maybe seeing something like this will help them visualize the exact same shit they put in somebody else through. Like, maybe it will bring some clarity to some young people in that, like, just... The, like, being able to see somebody on TV and be like, this is clearly not healthy behavior. Like... He's clearly struggling. Like, I hope he talks about the hard sides of everything that he goes through so that... Right. Right. It's not Anybody like, else oh. dealing with the bullshit is like, okay, like, no. So it's just like, oh, I'm Chris Brown and I was born horrible and I my whole <sighs> destiny was to just be terrible. You know what I'm saying? Like, No. You know, he makes <laughs> shitty decisions, obviously, but being right. super famous and having people in your business regardless definitely can't help. Right. So I'm interested in seeing how he's going to do this. You know what Sante said? That he feels like... Chris Brown is going to be like Bobby 
in that he's just going to be that nigga that's just like, oh, well, yeah, he can do this and that. But he's okay. always going to be just a little hood and not <laughs> there's no way to curb that. And oh. just like always just going to be a nigga. And it's just like, oh, that's Chris. Like he's I just, mean, and that's fine. Like I said, I'll wait for the trailer because I want Chris to do well. I just, you know, but I have my reservations because look at everything. Look at the past four years, please. Um. So there were rumors that Black China was pregnant with um, Rob Kardashian. I didn't baby. believe it. But if you're waiting for your young Japan Kardashian, <laughs> you're gonna have to keep waiting because what is wrong with you? Because I could just see it. Thailandisha. Oh my god. <laughs> Thailandisha. And they are going to be seething that that child's last name is Kardashian. I really don't. Like, I think that I would actually be surprised if she actually really did get pregnant and have a baby with him. You would? Yeah. Mm. I mean, I feel like she'll do it. Because she ain't got no kids, does she? I don't think she has any. Yeah, Black China has a baby with Tiger. What? All right, duh. <laughs> Stupid. Yeah, I See really how I be logged? I log off of everybody's life. I definitely think she would have Rob Kardashian's baby. Absolutely. And nothing surprises me with them people. Absolutely. Just, you can't put one thing I past just, a Kardashian. It just feels too petty. It's like, it's it's Shit. so, it is so petty Shit. that it's almost like, like, nah, God won't let that happen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, God's like... That's not how that works, unfortunately. Once that kind of petty <laughs> is unleashed upon the world, Lord only knows what would follow. So many you know? women, this has been done so many times. <laughs> this is nothing new. Like, she would not be the first or the last. I just feel like that kind of petty. It's fucked up. It's fucked up to fuck around with human life just to be petty. It is. But I don't put it past them people at all. Nope. Anyway, she uploaded some Snapchats and some Instagram of her flat stomach and her yoga pants. And basically, she, I guess, ain't pregnant. But she posted the first pictures that kind of looked like she was, right? It was almost yeah, like she it looked wanted like she people. she had a baby bump. So I think maybe she did that part. I mean, I don't. I like, don't I, I, what? Of course. Of course. They all, every time they name dies down, something happens to get people talking about them again. Anyway, she ain't. Okay. Moving on. Mariah Carey is apparently shooting a reality show that's not a reality show because she's Mariah Carey, but it is. Can you say something else about that? So Mariah Carey is working on a a show called Mariah's World. (laughs) It is an (sighs) eight-part... It is an eight-part docu-series that will okay. air on E. All right. Girl. So that's the end of the story. <laughs> she <laughs> said, I refuse to call it a reality show. I thought it would be a good opportunity to kind of, like, show my personality and who I am, even though I feel like my real fans have an idea of who I am. A lot of people have misperceptions <laughs> about this and that. It's a reality show, sweetie. Right. You not want to call it a reality show does not make it not a reality show. <laughs> but... If it helps at all, I'm going to watch it. I mean, when you said docuseries, I had hope that this was going to be like a well-done production. It probably it was, will. No, but I'm thinking like some in-depth look into Mariah's life, like how things have changed since she divorced Nick and married this new billionaire. Nigga, I don't know if and it's going to be kids are, Right. Deep. It's not going to. Right. Of course it's not, because Mariah Carey is not going to let E get that fucking personal, which is why I'm not going to watch that, because it's going what to I be saw, a reality show. What I read was that it's supposed to revolve around her like Vegas residency or something and it's kind of be like more of a behind the scenes. Of course, of course. Her balancing work and like them babies and uh, sparkling wine Mm -hmm. or whatever. Also known as a reality show. So, but you know what? I don't feel the way about Mariah that I do like with Chris. Like I don't care about any of that. I just want to see her be like a diva and glamorous even though we know that she's like Mm. At least 45% hood rat. <laughs> you know what I'm I, saying? You, you don't think hood rat Mariah will show up, though? You yeah, know, a little bit. It's not like she is afraid to right. let people know that she's got a hood side. That's just what mm. I like about her. Like, I like that she's over the top and extra and diva. I think my problem is that this is on E. And yeah. so I don't have any faith that it will be something that I will want to watch. I feel like I'll stream it 
You know, okay. <laughs> um, I don't know that because I want to Because if this actually... was on pretty much any other network, I would be intrigued. Including, see, the problem... Including Bravo. The problem... Same. <laughs> the problem with watching E! is that I feel like uh, a commercial for other shows that come on E! will come on and I don't want to see that. Like, right. any opportunity Kardashian. to just not look at that would be greater for because me. Because that is the Kardashian channel. You watch anything on E! You will see a Kardashian commercial. And because I try to limit myself to their exposure, then I just... I don't watch that channel. I feel like there's going to be like a little one of those little tracker those lines at the bottom of like news networks yeah that's literally what they have it's gonna pop up during Mariah's show and they're gonna tell you like Kylie just bought some new Giuseppe sandals it pops up on every show we'll let you know (laughs) Um, go ahead keep watching I don't yeah but I'm gonna watch it um, of course you are because Mariah is a lot of fun (laughs) and I just wanna see her be Mariah I hope it's good but like I said I just don't think it will be because he is you know, it's. I mean, it's home to the Kardashians. There's proof. There's trash. So. I mean, but it doesn't mean that they're going to be. I don't think it's produced by the same people. It could be something completely different. E did like uh, the I am Kate show, and although Caitlyn is <sighs> uh, Caitlyn, what a sad example that is. But it was shot very differently. You know, it was like not. It wasn't like because the Keeping Up with the Kardashians show. When I would see clips of it, it looked like the real world or something. Like the way that it's shot, mm-hmm. it doesn't look like. They have, like... No, it looks totally fake. Like, it just looks like everything... The quality the... of it. Oh, okay. I'm saying right. looks, I'm saying it looks like a regular, at, like the Bad Girls Club. Right. <laughs> but they're, feel, like, they're wealthy, so it would, okay. I would think it would look a little glossier. But, right. like, Caitlyn's show looked a little bit more docuseries-esque, mm-hmm. right. even though it was trash, but... It was sad because they had these, like, clearly intelligent and educated women people with different life experiences and all this here to tell Caitlyn like look girl it's great that you feel this way and you've come to terms with yourself but like your experience is so different from like basically everybody else's and still to this day this bitch is talking about endorsing who? When you Ted Cruz? When you Donald Trump? Not Donald Trump. You can be the greatest artist ever. If all you've got is rose art you just gotta work at rose art. <laughs> Crayola may not be an everyday thing for you. So what is wrong with you? If all you have is a rose art <laughs> watercolor kit. Then that's all you what gonna you get is a waxy with. ass picture that don't really look all the way right. You're right. But what can you do? You can only work with what you got. Absolutely. Kaylin only has <laughs> what can what I she what has. can I do with this? What can you even do with somebody who grew up rich and privileged and white in America. This woman is 60 something. You can't change this I, there's, person. I, there's nothing I can do Please, here, so. please. Thanks you were for destined to me. be this way. <laughs> right. The thing is, though, Caitlyn has been invited to speak on behalf of trans people. And as a non-trans person, I try not to talk about their business. But Caitlyn has been hired to be the face of, like, all these different brands. She's got, like, a Mac campaign coming out and doing some shit with, I think, Gap or Banana Republic, somebody. It was just, like, all of a sudden she's this, like, trans voice. And she's really, everywhere. And people are asking for her opinions. Like, for what? But that doesn't really have, I think, that much to do with the community. I think it has more to do with... Um, with visibility and discussions from people and stuff like that because her having some shit with Mac and doing all of this stuff is like, oh, well, it will just lead to the discussion of, oh, she's the first trans face of this maybe or right. she, you know, spoke here and look at us embracing trans. Like, like, and I think I've said this before, I feel like past Caitlyn being Caitlyn that she kind of represents the community in a way. Mm-hmm. So I think a lot of people are using her and it may have, it would have been somebody else you know what i'm saying if rob yeah. had come forward and been like hey y'all i gotta tell you something it would have been rob you right. know so it's right but i, I know what you're i saying. just want to be clear that caitlin I was, i'm so happy for you and like i'm glad that she came to terms with herself and she's happy but she was trash before and she's trash now yeah you being trans and you coming out as trans did not change your trash status unfortunately because it almost seemed like it would it seemed like on that show she was going to actually listen to these people who are saying listen most trans girls are in a position to where they have very limited resources they have to do sex work for money like education is not available and she just acted like she could not understand that people have different lives than she does like she always ended up coming back around to judging people for being in the positions they were in that's like she's just such trash and i hate that she's being asked questions like she's important um okay so last one uh amber rose's feelings 
about why she and her new bestie are judged for being skimpy and, (laughs) you know, nude when Beyonce gets a pass. Now, girl, this is kind of this is almost exactly what I was talking about in my read last week. I guess a couple of y'all were in your feelings about that. Oh, yeah. That's fine. I have just decided based on this that I'm just, I, I don't care. I, I don't have a dog in a fight. I'm, I don't, like, right. I'm just, I think that you as a grown up should be able to embrace your sexuality and your body and your whatever. Right. However you want to. But I also think that there is a difference there's a difference between being sexually empowered because you want to and being sexually empowered because you think you need to. If that makes sense. Like, I feel like there are people who are using their nudity and stuff as a business tactic. And it's not that there's anything wrong. I don't think that anybody is saying that there's anything wrong with it. I don't think that there's anything wrong with it. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that when people recognize that or acknowledge that they're going to, Treat it as such. It's going to to be digested differently. If first of all, I have never seen Beyonce's uh, titties. I have never seen Beyonce's vagina. I have seen Beyonce's booty and some G strings and a couple coochie cutters or whatever like that. But I have seen all four your titties, all eight labia. I have seen all of you, and there's nothing wrong with any of that. If Beyonce was like, here is my vagina tomorrow, that's her goddamn business. But it's like you, how am I, I can't, you're not Beyonce, what do you, what? Well, for me, it was more like, on what planet do you live that Beyonce does not get scrutinized for being sexual? Because it's like every time Beyonce walks out the door, somebody got something to say about what she's wearing or whether she's being too sexy on stage or whether this is appropriate for her. Like, I don't even know where you live. Like, what the fuck your bubble is like to where you think that Beyonce doesn't get talked about for owning her sexuality. Literally everybody she does. She absolutely does. So when I read that statement, I was just like, you sound like every other bitch who spent 30 minutes on, the, on Tumblr and decided you knew something and decided to start to start talking like I support Amber Rose and her her feminism and the fact that she wants to be seen as something separate than ex rappers baby mama or whatever like I totally get that but don't try to shit on another woman while defending some other bitch whose husband slut shamed your ass not even a month ago and now all of a sudden you best friends with this bitch like how about you turn around and ask for an explanation or an apology from the bitch whose husband is still clowning you to this day like this whole alliance don't make sense and then you brought Beyonce into it for what first of all you was wrong Beyonce always gets talked about you ain't google Beyonce and sexuality and see if you don't find a million and fucking one opinions on Beyonce's body and whether she should be doing whatever she's doing with it like I just don't even understand how you could be that fucking obtuse and be like oh well it doesn't happen to Beyonce bitch where like what and I thought you wasn't black anyway like so why do the opinions of these people in this community matter so much to you For somebody who denies her blackness, you care an awful lot about this shit. Like, you care an awful lot about the opinions of these people whose identity you claim to not share. I don't get that about you, Amber Rose. I don't understand the black part. Like, I don't understand how Amber Rose... You know what? I think the blackness ties into the fact that she brought up classism as a reason that Beyonce... Yeah, I'm talking about it from a racial perspective because she said something about it's classism that she and Kim are, like, not allowed to be sexual. But Beyonce is like, sweetheart... You were the only one of this trio who was poor. No shade. Kim grew up rich. Beyonce was very middle class in Houston. Her parents were earning, you know, more than enough money. Like, you are the one who grew up struggling. No shade because a whole lot of people grow up struggling. But you're talking about classism. Like, you and Kim Kardashian are in the same category. Even Kim Kardashian's entry into the entertainment world, which really what parlayed her into stardom was that fucking sex tape. Even that was only allowed to elevate her career because she was a white woman like I don't know if you think you perceived as a white woman but your entry into 
society happened to be through Kanye West. And so you were viewed as a rapper's girlfriend. Now, Kim and the way she got her money up and her mama turned this whole company around, the fact that they, they are white is the sole reason they were able to capitalize off that sex tape is true. But don't try to act like you and Kim Kardashian are in the same boat and, oh, Beyonce's allowed to do this, but we not. Like, talent aside, which we I'm not even getting into the whole talent aspect of it, like... It doesn't serve your argument to try to shit on Beyonce for being sexual when first or for owning her sexuality like it's okay for her to do it but not for y'all to do it like this that's that's not even what happens. So what are you even fucking talking about? I just feel like people are going to digest things differently uh. based on who it is and whatever but Honestly, I don't, I just don't, I don't care. I just, please, just, <laughs> okay. like, whatever, put your vagina wherever you want to. I don't have any fucking kids to worry about seeing it or not seeing it. Like, all I have is a fucking dog, and she doesn't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. We don't give a fuck together. Please, okay. everybody, <laughs> just put your vagina wherever you want to. If it is talked about, if some other girl, if, if Abigail Breslin or, or fucking the cast of Victorious or Sam and Cat or whoever, if they all have opinions on Ambrose Areola's next month, please leave me out of it. I don't want, I just, I just don't right. care about nudity at all. I know what a dick looks like in a vagina. I know what titties look like. I know what a butt crack looks like. I just, I feel like most other adults also do. And so none of these things make me uncomfortable. The frequency of the, how often y'all be posting these shits or doing whatever. Some of the time I have questions about that. I have questions about why there are so many like like uh, shafts and scrotums on my explore page based on niggas that I follow. Thank <laughs> you, you so much you for Instagram so for them. now telling me who is following these hoes when I go to their profile <laughs> pages and stuff. I don't have a problem with it because I don't have a problem with sexuality or nudity. Okay. I know what a dick looks like and it's fine. But I also sometimes are like, hmm, why? You know, like, and I feel like it's fair to ask questions, but. I mean, I just don't think you can force us to care about every single thing you do and consider it to be some That's what I'm saying. Like, like, not that I feel a way about it, but like, I, I think Amber Rose's expectation is that she should be received the same way that Beyonce is not understanding that Beyonce isn't received that way because of her sexuality. She's received that way because of the amount of work she has put in and the place she has worked That's to get. That's what I'm saying. And she uses her sexuality alongside her career and that is a part of it. Meanwhile, you have always been known for your sexuality and your looks and that is the reason why you are not perceive that same way that's what i'm saying and that is fine because don't nobody give a fuck about that but it's just like what do you want for people to say to you past that like i don't i don't understand you put your titties on on the fucking internet in a bathroom mirror or whatever like like nudes tinder snapchat style nudes and then you follow that up talking about in my comments like lol like you want people to talk about this but then you want everybody to say something nice i don't understand i don't know i do know that a woman should be able to do whatever the fuck she wants to with her body and she should be able to love and do whatever the fuck she wants to also but that don't mean that i'm gonna care or be your cheerleader or whatever just be naked if you want to love and respect I truly just don't I don't have an opinion on y'all's nudity because I've just seen it so many times I think I commented on Amber Rose nudes when I was like still new to them but like there's no reason for me to talk about something I see over and over again and you can't force the rest of us to care so singing sweet songs (laughs) is that it I'm finished All right, let's take a break hey y'all today's episode is being brought to you by Casper Mattresses obsessively engineered american-made mattresses at a shockingly fair price and now you get 50 dollars towards any mattress purchase by going to casper.com slash read and using code r-e-a-d you spend about third of your life sleeping let's make sure that you do it on a good mattress and casper brings together two great technologies latex foam and memory foam so it's basically a big cloud in your house that you get to sleep on whenever you want to. Yes, Casper mattresses feel amazing. They've got just the right sink and bounce no matter how you sleep. And they've got a risk-free trial and return policy. They're delivered to you and you can try it for 100 days. So really you get a great amount of time to try out the mattress. Make sure you really love it. And if you're not happy, Casper will pick it right back up. At the store, you get maybe a minute to try mattresses. But with Casper, you'll actually get to sleep on it and really try it out. Comparing Casper to industry 
averages it is much much cheaper we're talking five hundred dollars for a twin size and nine fifty for a king size mattress anybody who is out here furniture shopping knows that those are extremely low prices so get fifty dollars toward any mattress purchase today by going to casper.com slash read and using code read that's casper.com slash read use code read terms and conditions apply and now let's go back to the show so we're back and it's time for listener letters. It sure is. Send your questions to asktherita at gmail.com. You may just read it aloud on the show. Our first question comes from Sheba and she says, My fiance and I slash baby daddy have a great relationship and a one year old child. This was the first year that I could claim the baby on my taxes since she was born last year and my tax return was beautiful. I got back about $5,500 and I have a job and pay school on, so I'm used to getting something back, but with the baby, Lord have mercy. The issue is that my baby daddy now feels like he should get half. Of what? Of her tax return, her $5,500. I'm not stingy or anything, but I don't know if I necessarily agree with him. First of all, I'm not planning to spend it recklessly. I paid off my credit cards, paid my medical bills, gave my parents a monetary gift for watching our toddler for free while we work all year, and I'm saving the rest for our wedding costs this year. He says that it's not all mine, but yes, yes, it is. We are not married yet, and we can share in this next year. What do y'all think? We're also taking a trip this month, and I am funding it by myself. I really don't think I'm being greedy since all the money is going to bills, our wedding, our baby, and our life. Also, on a semi-petty note, I just feel like after nine months of carrying our daughter and delivering her, I should be able to claim her on my taxes and nobody should have anything to say about it. Am I being stingy? Do I owe him anything? Thanks, Sheba. Well, I don't understand. I don't understand how you would owe him anything. Uh, well, I don't think like legally she owes. I mean, him. I know legally she doesn't. I'm <laughs> right. just saying how. I think he feels entitled might. because this child is biologically fifty percent his. So. Oh, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying I to make sure. I forgot you used to work in the tax else. industry. <laughs> oh, barely. But it does not work like that. I still feel. Like I mean, you know legally, I <laughs> your money. Like, I'm not even talking about like legals court stuff, IRS shit, tax stuff. I'm not talking about that at all. Okay. Even if you feel like, oh, well, I helped make this baby. What the fuck does that have to do with your tax? Like, that has nothing to do <laughs> with your tax return. No, no, no. And I'm not about to go spend this on some fucking Manolo Blahniks. Like, bitch, right. I'm not out here about to go and fucking buy me a new Louis bag. I'm spending this on us and our fucking baby. So... I don't right. know I guess what I don't, you're talking about. I don't really understand. If he wants, you know, roughly, what, twenty seven fifty, then what is he going to do with it? Like, is he planning to go out and do something dumb? Because if so, then no, because y'all could be using that money to take care of the household. Exactly. Like, if you're using, if you want my money because you want to go, you know, throw some ones in your favorite stripper this weekend. <laughs> right. Or, you know, go and buy some new J's or whatever. Absolutely not. Because what? <laughs> right. And then if you want to use the money for shit at home, for the kid, for, you know, whatever, for the wedding, all of that, that's what I'm going to do with it anyway. Right. So I, again, don't understand how <laughs> you get my money. It's it's my money. This is a conversation y'all should really be having in depth because money problems do not go away after you're married. That's what every married couple has every to ever told me. And they fight about money constantly. So y'all might as well get it together now. But y'all can share in the tax return when y'all are filing joint taxes like. As long as y'all shit is separate, then for what? Like, he'll be all right. You being a grown-ass, responsible adult with the money. It's not like you out here acting ridiculous. So. Look, no. <laughs> no. And I, but and this I is her fiancé. Like, they're planning to get married. Like, right, meaning just around the fucking river bend, we'll have joint this and joint that, and that's when we'll discuss that shit, bitch. But as for to right now, and this this 12-month-old... <laughs> I'm sure it's more than 12. This year old fucking baby. Yes. <laughs> and this, well, like we, I already have a whole bunch of shit that I need to spend money on right now. And right. you're talking to me about half because you helped. Like, first of all, you did like a 16th of the work. <laughs> 
like keeping it real. Like, like in terms of the creation of this child, you did nothing. And probably even in the child rearing, because even when like men try to help out, when you first have a baby, like it's just so much work on the mother, like physically dealing with kids. Like, but that don't even really matter because you can you are totally entitled to keep that money. But I mean, really, even if that nigga was massaging your feet every single day <laughs> and delivered the baby himself. But I see why and, she wants to have like a real conversation because that's her fiance. Like they still No, together. that's fair. I'm not right. saying that you should go and kick the nigga's ass or shoot a Cardi B <laughs> mixtape cover and, and okay. completely make him your See, bitch. you just be taking but shots I'm just at saying, Cardi B and like, she don't be doing nothing to I you. just referenced the mixtape cover. <laughs> but, I mean, it was good and wretched. It's excellent. Um, Yeah, so, I've, it's your money trial. Yeah. And I don't imagine what he would want to do with it besides what you want to do with it anyway. Right. And if he gets like crazy about this, I think that's probably a sign that you need to look at that situation a little bit deeper. But good luck to you. I hope that you're... Um, relationship doesn't end up like a Isley Brothers song. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm not even going to ask. This next question comes from, um, let's say, Isaac. Oh, no, that's, that's bad because that's a man's name and this is a woman. I need a woman's name. Lisa. Rochelle. Rochelle. So, this is a little complicated, but it's kind of a mess. So, Rochelle writes, my boyfriend is an amazing man. We've known each other for 10 years and have been dating on and off for pretty much the whole of that time. I'm already lost. (laughs) I'm 25 and he's 27. We've been very serious for the past three years and we moved in together. He has grown so much as a man in the past few years and our relationship has grown stronger. Mm -hmm. Last week, we had a very frank discussion about our future, marriage, kids and buying a house. We know exactly where we want to go in life and when and with each other. Every aspect of our relationship seemed perfect. Yes, past tense. You know the bullshit is coming. Last week, my man told me that he paid for sex on a guy's trip to Amsterdam. She's using British words that I don't feel comfortable using. So, but she said like lads trip, and I just changed that to man, just so you know. She's like not from America because I think it's relevant because they just. 100% fine. <laughs> she put that in the title and I forgot to tell you. I will you. not find you for it. Okay. So anyway, last week he told me he paid for sex on a guy's trip to Amsterdam. We weren't together at the time and this didn't really bother me too much because I guess this is what guys do on those types of holidays. What did get to me is that we have discussed that trip several times and he told me he got a massage with a happy ending but nothing further came of it. When I asked him why he lied to me, he said he didn't because the lady he slept with wasn't the same lady he got the massage from, so it didn't count. So oh, now so he's he, just letting it all out. The very next evening, he tells me that he actually paid for sex when back in London also. On his way back to the house we both live in from his cousin's home, he saw a number on the side of a phone box, called it, and went down to meet the lady and paid 80 pounds for her services. Then came home a year, or 80 euro, I guess. Uh, then came home a year ago. The revelation has completely blindsided me. I never in a million years thought he would cheat on me, and I certainly didn't ever think he would pay to do so. Apart from the emotional aspect, he said he's strapped up, but he could have come home with anything. He apparently went to the clinic the next day and got the all clear. He apologized and said he never actually planned to tell me, but felt it was the right thing to do. He doesn't want us to have any secrets and said he intended for this to go to the grave with him as he felt very ashamed of himself. I don't know what to feel. We have a fantastic sex life and there are very few stones that have been left unturned, if you know what I mean. There is very, very little I wouldn't try. He knows this. Okay, all right, all right. She's making sure we understand that she's free. That's fine. And that's fine. Do you have a, does he have a problem or was it just for the experience, as he said? Can I trust him? I've never had a reason not to. He seems remorseful, but this is just so unexpected. I don't know what to feel. Should I take it as poor judgment and move on? I get it wasn't easy for him to tell me, so should I be easy on him? Please help me. Oh, my goodness, Rochelle. I told you it was a lot. So, hmm. So, here's the thing. I don't remember if we said this on this show or what, but I have said before, like, cheating-wise, when it comes to forgiveness, I think it's only worth maybe considering if the cheater comes and is like, listen, I have to tell you a horrible thing that happened and breaks it down for you. What you're saying that he did 
that definitely opens the door for right you know like okay how do i go about this now that means if you're like you know what i can't because i don't trust you or whatever that just needs to be it and that should just be fair if you consider forgiving him i don't know that i would judge you for it a because i would have no room and b (laughs) Because Ooh, to be he was honest, you know, and that he came forward and said, look, I did X, Y, and Z. Him paying for sex, I don't know. Ooh, I don't know if that makes a huge difference to me. Now, if this is a thing that he is like into for some kind of reason where he might want to go and pay for sex because he pays for it. Like, clearly he's not paying for sex because he does it. He can't get any. Right. Um, <laughs> Obviously, that's not it. Maybe it's easier than cheating by, like, going to find somebody who will sleep with you. I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know. But I don't know that I feel like that makes a difference in terms of how you should treat him or how you should decide what to do. Right. I think that the whole, you said he got tested once, like, the day after at the clinic or something. I think he should probably be getting tested more often than that if this is something he just does on a regular basis. Like, Anybody who's sexually active should. But obviously, when mm-hmm. you engage in riskier behaviors, you should get tested more often. And so, like, other than obviously he's putting you at risk, I think your bigger issue is, like, do you trust him to not do this again? Because right. it seems That's like... Right, like, he, you talked to him about the trip to Amsterdam, and he mentioned getting the massage with a happy ending, but didn't mention paying for sex. Why not? Like, why didn't he just say that then? Like, and I understand he's telling you now, and that's good, but do you really think the next time he goes on vacation, you're not going to think, damn, he about to order some ass? Like, do you really, are you going to trust yourself are you going to trust him like because it sounds like you don't it sounds like you're trying to tell us that and that's the question in any situation where you are dealing with somebody who cheated on you and whether or not you should get back with them it's can i trust that you're not going to do this again am i going to have to worry or be you know thinking that this might happen again every time you leave the house some shit like that because if that's the case i wouldn't waste my time right But it's on you, so what you want to do? The fact that he's done this multiple times, like, for me, would mean that I'm not doing this again. If I was to forgive a cheater, then I feel like that's something I would do once (laughs) and not ever again after that. But everybody else's standards are, you know, their own. So you figure out what works for you and whether you're going to be able to trust this man to go out with his friends or just be around women and not and not cheat on you like that's really a decision you have to make on your own like and it may be hard to let go of a man that you have such a great sexual relationship with but clearly dick ain't all that matters or you wouldn't be in your feelings now like clearly the emotional connection that the two of you share is of importance to you so if you can't trust him to be faithful to you in the relationship that you both agree to then i don't really see the point in staying but you know make your own decision and good luck to you i agree so hmm i don't know about this last one let me see well that makes me excited are you okay? I'm having some nature box. Yeah, I was gonna say, well, you sound depressed. Like, do you feel all right? Or are you just eating? You know, who knows these days? Okay. All right. So, do you want to do one more or no? Sure. All right. This one I haven't read yet. So, we'll just. Oh, God. I just, the last, I just saw the last sentence it says pregnant females fighting on World Star. So, we just gonna have to pray. Great. It says, Dear Kiff, you're in Crystal. Oh, this is from Aisha. I am 23 years old and I have an amazing boyfriend. Some people would put a but, except there isn't one. I love my boyfriend. Mm-hmm. We live together with a one-year-old daughter who stays with, oh, with his one-year-old daughter who stays with us every other week. Be specific. I love them both and I let that be known. People who don't know the situation assume that she is my biological daughter and we do not correct them as we do not bring her mother up. The reason being is that she is a conniving person who has told my boyfriend that she cannot stand his very existence. I was trying to be okay with her so that I could keep the peace between the two, but that did it for me. She has kept him from seeing her because he informed her that paying both child support and daycare separately was causing a financial issue and that he was legally advised to stop. She does not inform him of the doctor visits or anything really. She took him to child support so that once my child is born, he wouldn't take care of her as well as he could take care of my stepdaughter. (laughs) Oh, my God. She has insulted me, and before anyone asked, he did put her in her place when she did that. 
She hates when I call myself a mother and he has kept and has kept him from seeing her because of that, even though I am a mother. She keeps her from seeing his sister because they no longer tell her things she wants to know because of what she has said and done to us. Jesus, we took her to court for visitation prior to her taking him to court for child support due to the fact that she has denied him the right to see his child. This sounds like somebody I went to high school with. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, there's no line breaks here, so I'm struggling. She threatened to take... I don't want to put this innocent baby's name in here from him. She is just so evil to him. And it's to the point where if she wasn't pregnant by her boyfriend and I wasn't pregnant by my love, I would fight her. Even when we went to <laughs> Come mediation. On my love. <laughs> Reading verbatim. Even when we went to mediation for visitation, she tried to deny all the proposed. All the proposed. See, this is what happens when she <laughs> when she opens up an email that she hasn't read yet. <laughs> this is what happens. She tried to de- she tried to deny all the proposed days until the lady told her that she either made a decision there or the judge will make a decision. You know, I'm ready. <laughs> so if you want to just stop. And since we, I feel like we deserve to finish. And sure, since we sure. Have, the people at home. I'm just gonna I'm gonna put my finger up. And since we have evidence against her, she did not want to do that. I just want to know what I should do. I just want to know what I should do. That little girl means everything to me. She even calls me mom. She's one, but I think she knows what she is saying because the first time she did it, she looked at me to see what I would do. I said, what? And she smiled and continued to call me mom. (laughs) I love her so much. And I just wish her mom would shut up and just let us live. Please help before you hear about two pregnant females fighting on World Star. With love, Aisha. Well, at least it didn't really happen. Right. I'm so glad you restrained yourself, Aisha. (laughs) Um, my apologies for not proofreading your letter. Um, and I, <laughs> you know, I think I'm just a little bit, I think I'm flummoxed. Kifiri, what do you have for Aisha? You know, I'm really sorry that I'm smacking and stuff. You know, I promise I have home training. Um, <laughs> I'm just, you know. I mean, when the nature box is right in front of you. <laughs> there are 18 bags in here. Right. We got a giant shipment. We just, we've been eating for hours <laughs> now i just need like a quick like a refresher on the timeline so the baby is one yes she's pregnant yes and so she, is the other one did we get a timeline of how long she's been dealing with this nigga no but they live together and i can't imagine but he they, had a baby a year ago with this other girl right so either they haven't been together a whole year yet or he cheated on her and had this baby but she's pregnant by him now regardless or he left the girl when she was pregnant. I'm okay. just trying to get a, like a feel. Right. Because my thing is like you're dealing with like the crazy ex, baby mama, or, or maybe petty is the word I should use instead of crazy. Because there's three, four sides to every story. Right. But Child. it's like, did you find yourself in this situation? <laughs> or did you just be like... Nah, but I love him because mm. I always caution y'all not to deal with baby mamas, men whose baby mamas are their children are under the age of five. Just it always it's ends up advice. being a volatile relationship, like the the emotions and all that, the it hormones just, and everything. The child is one, like, and both of you are now pregnant again. Like, it's Jesus. only been one season of Game of Thrones <laughs> since I made this nigga's baby. And this, and you talking about this is your love, girl. And here you are about to have a baby with him too. Like feelings, so shit gets passionate. You know, I feel like. I'm obviously, again, not going to advise you to put your hands on anybody. Absolutely not. And this isn't even a situation worth putting. Like, I wouldn't not even. Not at all. It's this not ain't even something to fight over. This is stupid. Right. But if you have done all that you can, um, I feel like that's pretty much it. You know, like, if you're trying to take the high road, you're trying to be uh, fair and mature, and you're not receiving that back, it's just kind of like what else can you do right obviously i think that you and the the two of y'all ladies Mm -hmm. should have little to no communication 
with one another because mm-hmm. there's no real need to. But y'all do need to get no, y'all do have to get along because your children are siblings. No, I'm not saying get along. Oh. I'm not saying not get I'm saying that y'all don't need to y'all have don't need any to kind of right. back and forth exactly. or any exactly. unnecessary conversation or exactly. anything like that. You do need to be cordial. You do need to find a way to get along so that the kids can't don't you have all that drama and shit. Like that's absolutely necessary. Mm-hmm. But And y'all you are young. She's twenty three. You can oh Jesus. Like what? <laughs> Oh my god! And my mama was like, my thing. My mother was like a year younger than that when she had me, and she was just, just like super normal, <laughs> like <I> just <laughs> like. But whatever. But your mom is, you know, exceptional. <laughs> Traditional and born like way before the, the traditional Snapchat Jamaican era. young lady. Right. <laughs> she had her life right. together. <laughs> Hopefully, the water is running <laughs> from that river out back. Amen. Um. So yeah, I feel like y'all have to try and find, but you can't like force her to be on the same page as you. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. if she's just not willing to put the petty aside for the sake of the kids and stuff, y'all, you just gotta try and cut off any talking or whatever as best you can and get him to to handle that shit with right. her. Right. Right. Your role here is to support your. I guess you perceive that this your is love. your role to support your love. I would call him. It, so anyway, she said love. She did. She so said, I'm she gonna said, say right, love too. Right. So you you right. You're here to hold down your love. That is what you are there to do. Andrew hip hop. However, you have to understand that that man is the common bond between you and that woman, and therefore his issues with her, as it pertains to their child, are not your issues. Like you can speak to him within the comforts of y'all home about how you feel about whatever, but any disrespect and all that, all that needs to go through him. You talking about fighting her? That should never happen. Like that shouldn't even be on your radar as as a pregnant woman. Like that shouldn't even be. Y'all shouldn't even be having that much interaction with one another. Like, I understand you feel very strongly and passionately about this and you love this little girl so much and all that, but that is still that woman's child. And when you give birth to this child that you have with this man, you will understand exactly how she feels. And, you know, I hope you don't end up in her exact same position, but, girl, a nigga who had a baby a year ago and is in his... (sighs) I mean, honestly, I pray for you because that just... I just don't. Ooh, at least they'll like grow up in like the same fashion eras and like. <laughs> I mean, but right, you similar taste, you so angry at this lady. Y'all song. have to. The three of you have to be able to peacefully coexist because now you have these children in the mix who didn't ask for none of y'all's fuck shit, and y'all have to be able to get along. Like they, they're siblings. They gonna grow up together. Like. So y'all gonna have to figure it the fuck out. Everybody or it's involved. It's gonna be like this season of the Bad Girls Club. Everybody involved is going to have to mature. How does the Bad Girls Club keep getting me? <laughs> now they got all of these fucking. Because up there's something there. so entertaining about watching people just like deliberately and recklessly fuck somebody else's shit. Oh, but up. like now it's like deep. Like there's this couple on like I don't There's like these two sisters on there and one of them's a stud, but they're both oh, gay. God. <laughs> Oh shit! And then like the fem one has like like stage three cervical cancer, oh, so it's like damn. devastating, and everybody's in the house crying. But then also apparently like she and her sister have had like some kind of an incestuous like relationship. That they're going to reveal later on into the season, so like, and that's nothing. Oh and there are sisters God. on there with with one of the the daddies abused the other one, and and then the family got divorced, and the oh, sisters got split up. What? And then they're like boxing over Patron at the same time. Oh, so it's still like, Bad that's Girls just the Club. Back Drop to all this deep shit. Oh, I thought it's it good was now. like Bad Girls Club therapy or something. So it's still yeah, it's like a mix. Okay, <laughs> it's like family therapy and fighting. And then, so even though they're in therapy, they still live in they this house. They still fight and, and throw asses. each other's clothes down this. Oh, okay, the so steps. I need to put that on my DVI. Then. Oh, it's lit. Okay, because yeah. that sounds good. And the stud is fine, but also like I. But geez. like, I mean, are you fucking your sister? Like, did that happen? Are they identical twins? Like do no, they share think, the same DNA? I don't think the the gay sisters are are twins. Because I wonder, but they they have the same daddy. Wait, excuse me. Like they have the same dad, but I think they have separate. Why are we talking about the background stuff? They have the same dad, but I think they have separate, oh, different moms. You said they were sisters, not twins. No, there are some twins on the show, okay. but the, the lesbians. I thought the lesbians were twins, and I was no, like, they're what not the twins. Fuck. Oh, okay. they found out that they were sisters when they were like teenagers or something like oh that. But then God. I think that they did some freaky weird shit together. We're gonna find out later oh, on in the season. See, no, that but is either way, the stud is real, real fine. Oh, uh, really? Is she white? Is that the white? No, they black. Oh, so now I do need to look. And the fem one is really pretty too. Well, hold on, what's her name? I Google real quick. I think her name is Diamond. 
Oh, my God. Are you kidding? <laughs> so we're going to take a break and we'll be back. Hey, guys, this episode of The Read is being brought to you. <laughs> That's what this show's called. <laughs> and it's being brought to you by Bevel, the first and only shaving system for men with coarse, curly hair and sensitive skin. There's a reason that nine out of ten Bevel customers come back month after month, and it's because that fancy specter Daniel Craig razor is proven to reduce and prevent razor bumps, discoloration, irritation, things that can plague our skin. And up to 80% of black men and women struggle with razor bumps. So if you're anything like me and you just want to have a clean shave, a nice face, then get into it. Yes. Shout out to Tristan Walker. Still developing new products and pushing the brand, growing and doing amazing things. The classic bevel razor that we've been talking about for like at least a year now. It uses a single blade, which cuts hair above the skin, not beneath. So you avoid painful ingrown hairs. It's designed from the ground up to give an amazing shave. My brother got one for Christmas and he still loves it. He tells me all the time. It came in an amazing packaging and has this whole little kit to go along with your shaving experience so if you need a gift for the loved one in your life or you need to switch up and improve your shaving experience then get started now with get bevel and the read go to getbevel.com slash read and use code the read for 20 percent off your first month don't forget the first 200 people to sign up get their first month free but that's only with offer code free read the first 200 people to use offer code free read will get their first month free so again head to getbevel.com use promo code the read let them know we sent you and enjoy your brand new shaving experience now let's move on hey guys this episode of the read is also being brought to you by viceland which is a brand new network from vice it's actually really really awesome I'm in love with a lot of the content. I think that the show we to get, obviously, <laughs> it's one of my favorites because it, rel- it relates to me and, you know, a lot of the things that I hold dear. And also tells really engaging, sometimes like passionate, sad, like insane stories just about marijuana and the culture and how a lot of people use it uh, to better themselves or their lives or to help them or change them or whatever and I just think that it's a really great show one of many right and it was the episode that I saw was talking about how like so many people were using weed as like medication and trying to avoid the harder right. stuff that causes like PTSD, dependencies and cancer. Right, all this crazy shit but lo- like lawmakers refuse to allow them to use the weed for medicinal purposes so that show is really good another one that I saw is called Gaycation with um, Ellen Page and the episode I saw they were in Brazil during the carnival so it was like this whole big celebration was going on and they talked to them about the anti-LGBT feelings there and interviewed some people like a man who was a police officer who was like I have straight up killed gay people before because I don't rock with that shit like wow. right so it got very real like so Vizlin really came out the gate with some amazing shows there's other shows like Noisy they did Love an episode Noisy. with Kendrick Lamar right that was really good there's Fuck That's Delicious with Action Bronson um, Flop House which kind of looks interesting it's all these comedians in one disgusting house like it, it looks really trip. white but like you know yes. interesting in a white way so so if this programming doesn't sound amazing to you, I don't know what's wrong with you because I watched that shit like all day. So good. It was so good. And you can check your local listings, find out where it is on your cable platform, go to vice.com, put in your information, find out where it's carried, get into the shows because it's excellent. So shout out to Vice. All right. So we're back and it's time for the read. It is, and I think you should go first since I don't really have a read, but if you want me to go first, that's, that's fine perfectly too. fine. I feel like today's episode is super long unless you Is it super long? I don't, I don't know. know. We just be in here. I don't. The thing is, mine is also kind of positive. So maybe I should save it for the end because. OK. Oh, no, I'm totally going to go. I'll go first. Okay. I just wanted to finish my cash. Out. <laughs> Why didn't you just say that? Because I would have gave you a minute. Um, <laughs> Them fucking sriracha roast cashews. Them sriracha cashews not going to make it at this studio. It's like. <laughs> I just can't stop eating them. It's like if Flaming Hots had a cousin that like was like like real like earthy yes exactly a vegan and you, cousin and was going right and live longer a friend cousin right <laughs> yeah. it's the friend flaming hot it is they so fucking good anyway so all right not super deep last saturday ariana grande was on saturday night live now this is not really about ariana grande because why 
But okay, um, she was in a sketch. First of all, I think that not like really a huge Ariana Grande I fan. I'm almost thirty, and. <laughs> You know, I think that she's she's talented and she's really really cute. Um, and she does really great impressions. Um, she does. They like are excellent. Really great impressions. She sounds like people. She does a good job of that. Except Whitney Houston. Oh well. She just sounds like Ariana Grande singing a Whitney Houston song. But how can you hold that it's against Whitney. her? I'm right. Like, what no are you gonna do? Who, right. Um. So anyway, she did a skit. Um. That was kind of, like, based in the title offices. And I guess the premise of it is, like, all of these different artists' pages start going offline on title. And Ariana Grande plays, like, an intern or something that they have come in and sing the, like, these artists' songs in their place or whatever. Some of the shit. Right. Whatever. And so she does, like... Britney Spears, she does Shakira, she did Celine Dion really well. That's when she did Whitney. But she did Rihanna and she uh work, right? Uh-oh. And essentially that was just her swinging her hair around and going, <laughs> and then being like, I'm sorry, I don't know what she's saying. And then Keenan's like, don't worry, girl, nobody knows what she's saying. Uh, yuck. And so, okay. I just want to say that I think sometimes people should be reminded that English isn't the language of the world. American English certainly isn't the goddamn language of the world. And actually, people in English speaking countries outside of America almost always speak better English than Americans do. Um,. (laughs) <laughs> now, I mean, just being real. There are many different dialects that are still a form of English or that are English. Like English doesn't just sound like one thing. The same way that you can go to New York and then over the bridge in Jersey and someone's English going to sound different. Or I can go to fucking Atlanta or I can go to fucking Houston or I could go to New Orleans or I could go to Chicago or Boston or I could go to LA and people's English will sound different. It's the exact same thing. If you go to the US goddamn Virgin Islands, people there will speak English but it's not going to sound like your fucking English from Delaware or (laughs) for wherever the fuck it is that you're from you know you're gonna go to jamaica it's an english-speaking country england fucking owned it they can speak better english that no one goes to school in jamaica or in barbados or in the bahamas and they're not taught jamaican which isn't a language (laughs) by the way right um but i just kind of find it a little off-putting and sometimes yes offensive because while i didn't understand every single thing that rihanna said in that song I did hear the first time and kind of caught on to a lot of the things that she's saying. Now, I understand I was raised by Jamaicans. I have, you know, Bayesian people in my family, Trini, Bahamian people. I lived in the Bahamas during Hurricane Andrew. Like, I kind of get the West Indies. (laughs) Right. You know what I'm saying? And while different people on different islands also have different accents and ways that they say things... I think that it's rude or it's just kind of I'm I guess just it's annoying when you hear people say shit like nobody knows what they're saying. No bitch, you don't know what they're saying. <laughs> right. Like, what are you talking about? So it's not even just that you're saying, Oh, well, this is hard for me to understand. It's also like you're dur, 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 dur. you're doing all of this and like making a mockery out of the fact that right. you don't know what this person is saying because it's in a dialect or in a patois or whatever that you don't understand. And that shit is just like, it's dumb. It's make, it's almost like you're trying to, I feel like Sofia Vergara once said some shit like this or, or somebody about accents and how people feel like if you have an accent from another place that they kind of just perceive you as, as dumb right. because you don't sound like whatever an average and Amer- American accent is. Mm-hmm. And so I just be seeing little shit like that all the time. Or sometimes like when I would be growing up, I would hear a reggae song or a dance song would come on or soca or whatever. And I would have friends that grew up here, black as me, mm-hmm. and would be like, oh, don't even know that. They know what, nobody knows what they're saying. I don't hear this shit. I don't know what are you talking about? And I'm sitting here like, I I know what they're saying. Like, <laughs> I'm sitting here singing along to the song. I, I understand it. So what? So you just feel like because... 
this is something that's not a part of your culture or you right. can't understand it right. that you should just cast it to the side it's just it means nothing to anybody because it's not American America is not earth right. like so get, you can just pretend it's gibberish because it's not in what you would listen to or what you can it understand isn't. like girl and sweetie every week I will do this if I have to G O O G L E dot com. And you know what? I'm going to go a few different routes. Mm-hmm. B I N G dot com. Okay. Y A H O O dot com. It took me a minute. You know what? You can just get on any one of those, actually. You could go to Google and put in search engine. Mm-hmm. And Google will be like, well, here's some other hoes. They ain't me. But you know what? <laughs> You could just say, hey, Siri, and then ask your question. And you and Siri will do it for you. And Siri will do the remainder of the work. <laughs> so I just don't feel, I don't understand why we keep walking down this, this same road. Like, don't you want to go anywhere else? All you have to do is look it up. That's all I'm saying. But if you don't get it, you don't understand, that's fine. It's plenty of things that, you know, like, for instance, I'm not a huge fan of reggaeton music. I listen to a lot of genres of music and languages that I don't know or understand. Right. Reggaeton, for some reason, to me, I just, I don't, I don't like it. I don't yeah. like the way that it sounds or whatever. I'm just not a fan. But Is I'm not like going to say. Is like a controversial thing to say as a person of Jamaican descent or nah? No, because reggaeton is not a Jamaican genre. I mean, it has similarities in terms of of instruments and or instrumentation, as maybe like dance hall music does, mm-hmm. but it's in Spanish. Oh, okay. Oh, got it. Reggaeton. Reggaeton music, <laughs> where we live. You gotta walk with me sometimes, right? You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Coming up here was my first time being exposed to a lot of stuff that was not American, and I will fully admit that I had some like hidden biases and shit that I hadn't didn't even know I held until I moved here that you know, I had to work like, on getting over that's like barbershop music oh okay like, oh this so was literally what we hear oh uh, <laughs> yeah like <laughs> so that's what Okay. okay. There was, there's like Remind a mixture a of later. different like types of like Spanish yeah. versions of I know of, exactly what you're talking you about you know and sounds and whatever but um I'm not going to say, oh, well, don't nobody know what the fuck they saying and all this shit sound alike, bitch, turn this shit off. Right. Or I'm not going to, like, disregard it or act like it has no value to anybody because I don't get or it. Or act like your culture is a joke because I don't understand it. Which is right. Like, why people love to do that bullshit? Like, oh, haha, we don't get what she's saying, so let's just... So it's just stupid. I don't know about any goddamn uh, stuff. Uh, like, okay, girl. But had uh, all you ashy hoes out here in red, green, and <laughs> gold goddamn wristbands in the early 2000s because you bitches thought that you were goddamn damn Sean Paul mm, talking about that's right? the Jamaican colors <laughs> and they are not Jamaican colors for the God d- listen <laughs> they're not Jama- Google I'm not even I'm not even I'm Google but why do people love it. to take like the dance or the food or like the fun of a culture the and then out. pretend like the people don't exist or they don't matter or and then the when the picture don't it ain't important when we're like Hey, girl, so here we are. This is our shit, and this is how we feel about it. It's like, oh, girl, shut up. Like, we just having fun. Why can't we just do what we want? Right. I heard about a Mexican restaurant, I think, in Texas or Arizona that straight up said we not serving Trump supporters because if you believe we should be deported, then no tacos for you. Like You get none. And these white people are pissed, and they're just like, what are you going to do? What what exactly are you going to do? Besides, take your ass on down to the local grocery and like, go get something out of the frozen food aisle. Why people be inventing aisle. ways to feel oppressed? But I see what you're saying. Like that, I wasn't watching SNL, but you know that's tacky. That's I don't even nice. know how I got. No, you know what? I saw the, I saw that clip online the next day because mm. I saw people talking about her Jennifer Lawrence impression, which was really funny. And so I decided to watch the other skit too. And I, I was saw surprised at how good Ariana Grande is at impressions. She's like, really good. So if, if her album flops, at least she can always, you know, she could be a voice actress, definitely. Or for she could sure. just do impressions for a living. I feel or she like, could like model lip gloss. I mean, I just... Or I, ponytails. She can take that ponytail down. Listen, nobody's edges are that fucked up. Now listen, girl, I believed you at first, but take... <laughs> If you have to start from scratch and just shave it off, you have the face yeah, for it. Yeah, I mean, why not? But just don't Cut it off. Wear a short stop. thing. Just say you like the fucking ponytail, sis. Do like a pixie or something until you can get, <laughs> you know, everything in order so that you can just wear a normal, non-thin men ass haircut. <laughs> okay, so anyway, is that it for you? I'm done. Okay, so this story that I found about earlier today actually made me emotional, <laughs> which is what made me feel like I should talk about it because, like, I actually 
like felt tears come to my eyes when I was listening to this podcast. Oh God! It's by no, it's not like a sad story, but it's by a uh, Radio Lab uh, by WNYC, mm-hmm. and this episode is called Debatable. Have you heard about it? No. So it's the story of Ryan Walsh, and then also a little bit later on Elijah Smith, but they became the first Black people or the first black debate team to win, I think, two debate tournaments at, like, the national college level in the same year. And they did it by embracing their blackness. Like, I think seven or eight different people emailed the inbox telling me about the episode of this show because it's amazing. Like, this young man was in school in Kansas City or St. Louis, something, I think in Missouri or Kansas, one or the other. They all kind of run together to me. But okay. the point is that he was pushed into debate. I don't want to give it all away, but he was pushed into debate by a teacher and ended up getting really good at it, learning the ins and outs of it. And then he learned to embrace his queerness and his blackness and turned the debate world into a place that and into a platform where he could say, why aren't more black voices here? Why is this institution set up to keep us out like because I'm thinking about back when I was in high school and there was a debate team but it was like all white it was like super preppy it was the kids whose parents were into like politics and shit right it just didn't even seem open or accessible to everybody else now I've come to find out there's a whole like black student debate network and they're at all these different schools and black kids are getting more and more into debate but these two specifically like embraced their they took the the all the things that made them different and use that passion in the debate. Like they break down how these three different components of a debate is how you win one and how the passion behind what they were saying could not be denied. Like they had their facts together. They had their research. Their shit was educated. Like they made their points and all that. But really utilizing the passion and letting the pain of their experiences come through like is what really helped them to succeed. And make all these huge like leaps and bounds and do all these amazing things so i just wanted to share that information obviously i don't have a read this week because i just don't but that episode of that show like i was on my way here and like in tears on the train and you know i typically don't have feelings about anything Anything. but no because i just don't believe in that but listening to these kids it's like listening to us like because he's in this he's in the interview like in the studio with these people um, at WNYC and they're talking to him about the experience and he's just like he sounds so much like we do and it just made me so proud of him so I want to say again shout out and congratulations to Ryan Walsh and Elijah Smith and everybody go listen to the most recent episode of Radio Lab called Debatable it was phenomenal and their story is incredible and I feel inspired and I want to like know them it's amazing so go check it out All right, well, that's the show. That is. That wraps up this episode of The Read. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and everything else at This Is The Read. Um, And check out thisistheread.com for links to everything we do and all our upcoming shows. Kifir, are you having an announcement this week? Um... No. Oh, a few last minute tickets have just popped up for the Toronto show. So the readlive.com, if they aren't sold out by the time this airs, um, if you weren't able to get a ticket to the Toronto show, a few more have just been released. So again, the readlive.com. We will see you guys this Friday. That was for people who listen early. (laughs) Amen. Those are for the ones who sit up and wait and be like refreshing SoundCloud and iTunes. Like, it's coming. It's coming. I see y'all in the comments every week. Anything else? Or we got an acronym? Are we done? Um. (laughs) Think about it. (laughs) No, I don't think that I have anything. I just want to say, you know... Good luck to these girls in their new journeys. Leave Beyonce out of it. Don't fight while pregnant. And yeah, I'm done. All right. We'll see y'all next week. Don't forget to check out our sponsors over at Vice and their brand new network, Viceland.